Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to uh, demonstrate how to uh, calculate the electric field uh, due to a semi-circular uh, charge distribution. So for this example, imagine we have a, a total charge Q spread out in the semi-circle here with a radius, which I'm just going to call R. Right, and the idea here is I want to be able to find the electric field at that point in space. Now I've already went ahead and put a coordinate system origin there. And the main idea is that we have to break the problem up into little pieces. So I'm going to think about an arbitrary little chunk of charge here somewhere on this uh, charge distribution. Now this charge has a certain length. That would be that value. And that's not really a, a dx or a dy. That's a little arc length piece. So I'm going to say that this thing has a length which I'm going to call ds. And remember from definition of a radian or from the radian concept, ds would equal in this case r d theta where um, if I looked at that line and that line right there, the d theta would be that interior angle uh, right there. Right? Now the charge density for this problem, oops, I guess I don't need that right now. The charge density is a linear charge density basically, and we can get that by taking the total charge and dividing by the length of this curve here. That charge is divided up on that length, the entire length. So a circle has a circumference of 2 pi r. That's half a circle, so pi times r is the length that that charge is distributed over. All right. This charge now has a, a uh, charge on it that I'm going to call dq, and it's going to equal the charge density, q over pi r, times the length of uh, that element, which is r d theta. And you notice that the r's cancel, so the charge of that chunk uh, is equal to q over pi d theta. Right. Now, because I'm interested in an electric field, first thing I'm going to do here is draw an electric field vector for um, the electric field vector at the origin due to that chunk of charge. Now remember, as a rule of thumb, electric field vectors point towards negative charges and away from positive charges. So the electric field vector is going to point kind of down and to the right, and it makes some sort of angle, uh, I'm going to call that theta, with the uh, x-axis here. Right? The magnitude of this field, right, dE, is going to equal k dQ over r squared. The dq, we've got an expression for q over pi d theta, but before we even get that far, let's talk about uh, adding these vectors up. All right, so we're looking for vector quantities, and the k dq over r squared, that is the x component, or I'm sorry, that's not the x component, that's the magnitude of the electric field due to this chunk. But when we do an electric field calculation, because electric fields are vectors, we have to deal with them in terms of components. So this electric field vector, I can break up into x and y components, and that might look something like this. The x component would be about that length. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and move this over to here. And then the y component would be this piece of it. Now remember, the components themselves have directions. Right? So this red one here, I would call this dEx, and this one dEy. Now, in this problem, it turns out we don't really need both of these. Just by observation here, we can say that the net field in the y direction is going to be 0 due to the symmetry of the problem. So we only need to worry about the x component. Now, the x component is adjacent to this angle that I have called theta. So it's going to have a magnitude equal to uh, dE cosine theta. And this is what we need to be adding up. All right, so I'm going to write this over here. dE x direction is going to equal, all right, we got k dQ over r squared. k. The dq uh, we have over here, that's equal to q over pi d theta. Right. Uh, divide by all right, r squared. r is the distance from the point to the charge that you're uh, applying this to. That's what I call capital R here. And then we're going to multiply this by cosine theta to pick off the x component. All right. 
Next step is to integrate this. Net field x direction is going to equal, right, then we have to integrate this. And I'm going to go ahead and bring out constants right now, k, q, pi, and the r square is constant. Now, you have to remember that the integral here is over theta. And as, as theta changes, as this thing moves back and forth or along the semicircle, the radius is not changing. <clears throat> so we're just going to have the integral d theta or, or the integral cosine theta d theta. All right, now we're going to have to talk about limits. So the limits are going to depend on how you set the problem up. So let me go back to that. All right. So here's my angle theta. And if I move over to here, that would be the same as, that's, whoops, and I look at this horizontal line, that also is theta. So in this picture, theta equals zero would be along this axis. So my theta is going to start from down here, which is going to be minus pi over two, and end up over here, pi over two. So my limit's going to be from minus pi over two to plus pi over two. And that should do it. Let's see what we get out of this. All right, x component of the electric field equals k q over pi r squared. All right, uh, integral of cosine theta d theta is sine theta evaluated from minus pi over 2 to plus pi over 2. And what we're going to get out of this, let's see, k q over pi r squared. Let's see if we take sine of pi over 2, that's 1, minus the sine of mi uh, minus pi over 2, which is minus 1. That's going to make that a plus 1. So we're going to end up with uh, 2 kq over pi r squared. That's going to give us the net electric field uh, at the origin due to this charge distribution. If I want to make that into a vector, let's see, how about we do this. The electric field vector is going to have a magnitude of kq, 2 kq, over pi r squared, and it's in the plus i direction according to the coordinate system I have shown. Again, this expression is good for the electric field only at that point in space. If I move to any other point on this uh, surface, everything's got to be recalculated. But anyway, I hope that this video helped demonstrate how to break a charge distribution up and basically use the point charge rule. Uh, electric field due to a point charge is kq over r squared. The main idea is break your charge distribution into little chunks that you can uh, call point charges, apply this, and then add the electric field vectors, but remember vectorally. So in this case, we were adding the x components of the electric field. And we didn't bother with the y components because the net field in the y direction is zero from because of the symmetry of the problem. Anyway, hope that this video helped demonstrate these concepts. Have a great day.